couple of years ago, and a couple of years ago now, well, three and a half years ago or so now, I did a bunch of interviews with state representatives and stuff like that, and I was actually trying to do more of that again, but um, schedule stuff, and I'm busier now than I ever was um, after selling my business, so it's finding time to do this, and this is definitely my passion. Yeah, you have a passion for this? I do. I love it. I love talking to people. I love uh, learning and uh, through conversation. Yeah. And, and this is a great way to meet people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, a lot of times I'll have people, like for yourself, uh, like I don't know literally nothing about you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, do, I try to do a little bit of sleuthing online to create questions Mm -hmm, you know just to kind of be prepared and uh you actually was it through uh lee trucks that you got connected with me okay yes because i told lee um because he was the one who set me up with all the interviews the last time i'm like Mm -hmm. just if anybody wants to come on as we're gearing up for some of these things let me know yeah lee's a great guy to know yeah lee's he is uh i gotta get him on the podcast oh yeah he'd be Uh, great he would be great Plus, just having the history in his in his data bank yep. from Anistee and everything that's kind of you know gone through over the years would be he'd be he'd be pretty rad to have on for sure. Yep. So why don't we just get right into it, Nate Markham? Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell everybody who you are and you're running for uh, the county commission seat for District Seven? Uh, I did have um, Shane um, Mansion on mm-hmm. and. I'm going to put both of these podcasts out basically at the same time. They're both going to go out on the 18th of this month. Uh, so hers is already scheduled for 5 a.m. on the 18th, and yours is going to go out at 5.05 on the a.m. Okay. on the 18th. Great. So they're going to be back-to-back. So I think we should just start with some introductions, maybe just let everybody know who you are and yeah. what your plan is. So like is. you said, my name is Nate Markham. I'm running for Manistee County Commissioner in District 7. Um, this is my first time running for public office, and I have to say that I really, truly enjoyed the experience, uh, campaigning, getting out into the community and meeting people. It's really been very rewarding so far, and uh, I can see that I'll like to do it in the future. You know, it's been great. Um, so I've lived in Manistee for over 13 years okay. with my wife and two kids. I think I had your wife on the podcast. You did have my wife okay. on your I just podcast. Want to make sure on the- Sabrina Sarisa from the yeah. Manistee Friendship Society. She's been there over four years. She's dialed. I mean, she's got the pulse of that. Yeah. You know, she I mean. is great at her job and she loves it. She's like the perfect pos- uh, perfect person for that position there. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been together over 15 years, two kids, uh, 12 and 13. They both go to Manistee schools. I'm a graduate of West Shore Community College. I'm currently a cannabis cultivator for a local cannabis company, Heritage Farms. Um, I run a propagation building for them. We produce hundreds of thousands of plants every year. I I make cuttings, so I produce like the baby plants that end up in the field and end up in our grow building. I start them off. So that's that's my job. Um, I'm friends with Willie and uh, them guys up there. And yeah. You know, I went to school with a lot of those guys back in the day before they, you know, they came back and forth. Like Trevor, Trevor's a good buddy of mine, and uh, they got a good operation there for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been working there over four years now. Yeah. So, so what brought you to Manistee? Well, when so I've been here for thirteen years. Yeah, I've been here for thirteen years. So. I was living in the Flint area. Okay. Um, me and Sabrina lived in a small one-bedroom upstairs apartment. Um, I was a DJ. I was working at a factory, late nights, overnight shift, real hard labor, um, which I still work hard labor. Um, and my mom uh, used to come up here. She lived downstate, worked downstate, and would come up here as like her getaways, weekend getaways, uh, stuff like that and we ended up looking for a house we wanted to move out of flint and since this was her up north spot we decided to come up here and check it out we loved it 
we picked out a house and we said bye flint and we came to manistee and never looked back and it has been probably the best decision we've ever made to move to manistee our lives you know were kind of revolutionized up here i i mean this is i i beat this drum over and over again and you know there's that there's that homer part of me that's like i just really want to just keep it the way it is and keep you know the same recognizable faces everywhere but I don't blame anybody. I just had this conversation today with somebody. They were talking about how they found Manistee coming up from the Grand Rapids area years ago. And they own businesses in Ludington now. Uh, they just love this little corridor we have here from like Ludington up to like Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. It's just this little gem. Yeah. And it's quiet enough and it's small enough. It's just, if you could find something. If you could keep paychecks coming in, this is this is the area to live. If you can sure. find work to make a good living, this is a great place to be. Yeah, I would agree with that, 100%. Mm -hmm. And Manistee is a small town, but it's bigger than the small town I grew up in. And there are more opportunities here than the small town I grew up in downstate outside of Flint. Um, Emily City is the name of the town where Emily I grew City. up. Emily City. Yeah. And so, you know, we love it here, and it's a great community. So how did you get into the cannabis industry? Well... Um, basically I saw the job advertised on Facebook. Um, at first I was unsure, uh, cannabis wasn't, uh, what I was looking to get into the guys I work with. A lot of them, they only want to grow cannabis. Sure. That is their <laughs> career. That's what they do. Yeah. I'm not like that per se. I love the job. It's great. It's fun. Um, but I got into it cause I saw a job that paid a lot more than the current job I had. Uh, my wife encouraged me to do it. I wasn't sure. I don't know. Do I want to get into cannabis? I want to work in social services. My wife strongly encouraged me to do it. And I did. And again, very good decision because my life, again, moved up and continues to move up because it, it paid more. They put me in a leadership position and, you know, it's been good. It was a good decision. So talk to me about your uh, your mindset going into public service, going to take the leap to just jump right to county commissioner. Yeah. So uh, I was looking for a way to apply my skills to help the community. And I have been for a long time. I used to volunteer for a nonprofit in Flint. And that's kind of a whole nother story. But I was able to devote some of my life to helping the community there. And I wanted to do that again. My kids are a little older now. Um, I had a little free time. Uh, not much, but some, and I wanted to do something with it. I don't like just sitting there doing nothing. So I kind of put my neck out there. Um, I can tell you how I yeah. fell yeah. into the yeah. position. So it's real easy. I got a text message. Do you want to run for local office? I responded, yes. Uh, a couple of days later, I got a phone call from a woman who gave me some information on how to do it myself, some, some stuff I can look into, and I thought that was going to be it. Said goodbye to her. Thanks. A couple days later john helge the chair of the manistee democrats calls me gives me a phone interview and asks me to meet in person okay so i go that weekend down here to the coffee shop and 15 minutes into the interview he asked me to run for county commissioner hey, john's a good shit yeah love yeah. john great guy and i couldn't believe it at the time but he believed in me he saw something in me and after i got a little training they put me through a lot of training i've been to you know, classes, weekend retreats. I've been through a lot of training and I see now that how capable I am of doing it. Sure. I'm going to be great at this. And, but when he asked me, I wasn't so sure. Um, but I think I made a great decision doing this. I, it takes balls. I mean, it really does. Yeah. But to put yourself out that way, because the public scrutiny over any of these positions is pretty high. Yeah. You know, even... You know, from the people that 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 just kind of like to be armchair quarterbacks on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably where you're going to get the majority of the pushback. Uh, at least from what I can what I can see as somebody who spends a lot of time online. Uh, <laughs> I do too. But, but the but I I guess to just say I'm jumping into the fray and this is a this is a big seat in for yes, the county. Is. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people that start off, they, they, they make their way into service as a as they're charting a path to get to certain seats in growth, whether that's to get on city council and then maybe do something in at the commission level at county level. 
they get on committees, they do things like that. They, they really start more of a grassroots and then make their way to these positions through that tunnel. And you're just bypassing it and going right to the county seat. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's democracy. I, I have a democratic right yeah. to run for this office. And really, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, government positions go a lot higher than county commissioner. They do. It, it's kind of an entry level seat, but it, it's a huge position. But I don't think it's like I'm not going in to be president. You know what I mean? I one hundred percent track with what you're saying. Yeah. But at a smaller level, I guess what I'm saying is, is if we're just looking at city county politics, it's pretty big seat mm-hmm. to just go right for. And I mean, I commend you for the effort, and I'm sure you'll do great. Uh, you know, I've been here. My whole life, 45 years, 46 years now. And, uh, you know, these things are, they're, they're difficult. Yeah. They're di- I, just on a, per- a personal level, they'd be difficult. Uh, you know, I've, I've often thought about, I try to do, for me, if I'm just going to talk about me for a second, I like to volunteer. I'm on some committees. That's kind of like the level where I'm at. I'm not trying to, to be the person yeah. that everybody's going to look at. I mean, your district is big. That seventh district it's, is big, and it's and it's positioned in a way that you, you've got the thirty-one corridor on it. It's the <laughs> most populous district in the county. Uh, massive. It's where and, everybody lives, and a lot of shit can be going on in that and district. It includes downtown yeah. Maxwell Town, a lot of the businesses, you know, in the main residential areas. So, what's your plan? What? What? I guess let's start with what do you think? There's there, that that district needs the most what are the deficiencies or the areas that you think you can improve and then how are you going to yeah, try well, to improve those my number one issue is definitely housing uh, okay. i go out canvassing knocking on doors and talking to people all the time and i ask them what are your most important issues that's what i ask everybody and housing better paying jobs child care that's what people care about that's what people need and for housing there are actually a lot of things going on already with housing habitat for humanity is huge in this in manistee they're working they're working on stuff right now as we speak habitat for humanity is building houses in manistee uh there's a old kennedy school not there are two kennedy schools which is super confusing and i wish they would have just made that a little bit easier for everybody (laughs) but but that school's been torn down so we don't worry about that anymore it's going to be 200 apartments um there's another a proposed neighborhood habitat for humanity is working on just outside of town which is so, on murky correct yeah out there yeah. Uh, habitat for humanity broke ground on a, it's a model house for a proposed neighborhood of workforce housing and workforce housing helps working class people enter into home ownership so um you know working class income they would help you get into owning a home at the ground level so how does that work through Habitat? Is that an application process? Can you speak to that? Do you know how that works? You know, I wouldn't know the specifics exactly. Yeah. But I would agree with you that we need more workforce housing. Yeah. I don't think we need more, like, apartments. I think we need housing. I think we need both. <laughs> well, I mean, we do have some projects that are underway. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And I just, I think more people are, that have families would rather have a home than a Sure. Small yeah. apartment. It definitely prefer to yeah. get a person into home ownership than mm-hmm. than an apartment. But the two hundred apartment units coming in is huge. And, and so how are you working too. aside from Habitat for Humanity? I mean, do you have a plan? You have some notes. Is there anything that you want to go over? I mean, as far as housing goes, what do you have on your working with Habitat for Humanity and um, the Housing Commission, the Land Bank, and all of, you know the the board does all of this already. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not reinventing the wheel here. <laughs> They're already doing this. I want to get involved with it. I want to get on the housing board and uh, make sure that I'm being as proactive as possible. That everything that can be done is being done, and that there's no um, just letting something sit or possibilities go idle. You know, um, but by no means is there nothing happening on this already you know what i mean and we can talk about another issue like child care yeah by your way so big one yeah there there's a program called uh, duo share or tri share and these are programs that help parents with funding child care Uh, it takes funding from the government it and it takes funding from your employer 
and I think it can be grant funded so you're and from the parent so you're looking at two or three people or entities helping to pay for child care but there is a problem with this we don't have the necessary facilities to take this funding to so that's a huge problem but with that uh, tri share dual share um, I believe you can go to licensed facilities some people run a licensed facility in their home right stuff like that you can take it there so they're still capped on the amount of children that they can have though. yeah right so we're limited on the facilities. how does it work with the employer as the far as employer paying so into I, it, I would that's uh why there's a duo and a try because you can't always get the employer the tri share would be the em the employer the duo share is without the employer so that's something that the employer signs the, up for the employer would okay have to. we're going to this part of our benefits package we're offering x amount of dollars into something this like that program yes, yes. Huh, that's interesting is that based on number of employees that the company has like the size of the company that i don't know it's a good question yeah so and as far as jobs i think infrastructure infrastructure and human resources have to be the probably the two most important things that, that i would harp on infrastructure and human resources and what i mean by infrastructure things like roads broadband education and medical human resources like i just said child care and uh transportation like dial -a ride and dial -a ride something we need to um i think we should expand the hours of dial -a ride it needs to go later and it needs to go on the weekends um, because a lot of people depend on dial -a ride and they they don't uh, their needs don't go away after five o'clock and on the weekends you know they they need public transportation now for dollar ride that is a uh is that under the city umbrella dial rides county so it's a it's a county uh operation yeah okay so then we'd be looking at uh, more funding for manistee transportation it'd probably be more essentially funding. yeah yeah so that you can expand the uh, employee hours and i get it So have you had conversations with uh, people that are in positions like with the county already, yeah. uh, yes. PPW, uh, you know, to try to figure out where they stand on things so that well, you can help here's formulate? Who I've had. I, I haven't gone that deep into it yet. I have had lots of meetings with current county commissioners, mm -hmm. Meg Botzer, who I'm running to replace, yep. and Karen Goodman, who I know you've had on this show. Yep. And Meg's awesome, too. I've, yeah. I've known Meg a long time. She's great. I've been sitting down with them for months. And they've been kind of training me, going over a lot of information. Um, they help me prep for the debate coming up tomorrow. Um, so I'm in constant contact with uh, Karen and Meg. That's the candidate forum? Is yeah, that really the a, forum. Is it, is it a debate? It's not a debate. It, some people call it a debate. Uh, it's a forum. Right. So you're just like each person's getting an opportunity. You give an answer and you there's no rebuttal. Okay. So you just give your answer. Gotcha. You're ready. I'm ready. I've been, <laughs> I've been to three trainings. You know, I'm ready to go. I can't Debate's wait. a tough thing. Uh, I'm not a debater, you know. Uh, number one, I'm a meathead, so I'm not really educated on anything. I have a little bit of information, which is probably dangerous. Uh, but, I'm, you know, having conversations like this, I think, are great. You get an opportunity to uh, get your word out and... You know, it's not like it's not like last night's debate, which, by the way, I skipped. <laughs> I'm not down for that kind of shit, but because uh, it would just make me angry. I watched the entire thing. <laughs> Ugh, man. I watched part of the last one, and I thought that was horrendous to watch. So I'm the it. type of guy that watches all the presidential speeches all the way through. You know, I, I'm a, I love speeches. Yeah, I do too. I like I like the old school speeches though. I like when it was more presidential. I like when it was more uh, when the person that was speaking seemed to have his shit together or her shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's always that's definitely better. It's a better speech if they have their stuff together. Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to ask what your age is, but I mean, like I've I've told this story before, but just watching speeches on my little black and white TV when I was a kid in the eighties. There was something about it that is much better than it is today. In fact, today I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine about debates, and I skipped it, right? I had other things I could watch. I watched YouTube. I watched the show with my daughter last night, and uh, when we were younger, we only had one option. 
Yeah. There was three channels, and if the debate was on, that's what you were watching. It's on all three. Yeah. yeah. You didn't have a choice if you wanted to watch TV, but I don't know. So some of the things that I asked your uh, your counterpart, the one, uh, Shane, who's running against you on this, mm-hmm. was, you know, how are you going to bring in uh, people to the table to help negotiate some of these things like housing or businesses, especially on the 31 corridor? It looks like everything... You know, there's a whole lot of rhetoric online when something comes up for sale or all of a sudden there's a big piece of property that's vacant. Uh, this is These are the things we want, the community speaking in the public forum on Facebook now. Uh, how are we, how are you uh, going to help negotiate or to get people in to build developments that you think would be good for the community? Yeah, because yeah, what I think is good is probably it could be different than what you think is good or somebody else. But I mean, if you have a vision, if there's if there's an opportunity to bring in company A or B to help bring jobs to the community, how is Nate Markham going to help facilitate that? Yeah, so I I think a lot of it is going to have to do with being proactive. You have to go after stuff. I think that there is a lot out there that you have to go after and get. Um, and a lot of it has to do with networking and who you know. Uh, right. If you know the right person, you have to go talk to them and you have to negotiate with them and you have to try to get what you're looking for. And if you don't know that person, you don't know who to talk to, you don't know that organization, there's no way to get it. So, I mean, that's that's the reality of it is it's networking and it really is who you know in stuff like this. You know, it's not going to fall out of the sky. You're going right. to have to know where to look. You're going to have to know who to talk to. And I think I'm a good person to do that because I love talking to people, getting out there, networking. I'm great with that type of stuff. I'm always out in the community. I always have been, you know, I'm kind of a man about town since I was a kid. So networking with people, getting to know people, you know, and being proactive is nothing new to me. So really, I feel like if I get in there and I see the lane, I'm going to take it. Um, I think the opportunities are there and that there's a lot that can be done. I'm very hopeful for, you know, the future. I get it. I mean, all sounds great. Yeah, I think people get it twisted sometimes that, you know, these businesses or big developments just call Manistee and say, hey, we're interested. Yeah. (laughs) When, you know, the, the state is vast, just like the country is super vast. And, you know, there's a little bit of, hey, we've got to reach out and see if there's something there. You know the olive branch per se and to try to get some company or industry or whatever to come in so i'm not that guy you know so <laughs> good luck with that yeah but you know because you you've got a lot of different pieces you got to work with you know and i was talking to shane it's like you know how do we put i'm more of a uh i, I look at things from a like a business org chart and I said this to Shane on the podcast as well. It's like, you know, I, I, I would much, I would very much like to see the city run like a business, you know, and I'm doing this with my hands because it's like, you know, there's the, there's the team leader, the owner, whatever at the top. And then we've got everybody else and everybody knows their responsibilities and we're all working together because we have committees for this subcommittees for that. You, you know, we've got different departments of the city and the county and a lot of times I don't I feel like they're not communicating in the, the best possible ways mm-hmm. you know and it's not like everybody's elected does that make sense in government is not even close to everybody being elected right. the, I would say the real meat and potatoes daily grind of government is done by career people who are appointed or hired um, the elected people are are few, much fewer than career people who are doing the real hard work, in my opinion, that day-to-day grind. I mean, the people who put together the budget, the the board looks over the budget and approves it, but there's an entire organization that spends the year working on the budget for the county. And I think those people are super important, those career people, you know, uh, those career people, we really need them. So one of the things that I was really curious about is it's a, so we're not really touching on the fact I think that you're super I don't, I don't know how to phrase phrase this. I watched your episodes on the issues with Nate Markham. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Great. And a couple of times. I watched them again today as 
I was trying to figure out like you know what would be some good things to talk about and it seems like you have uh, a pretty large knowledge base of government yeah yeah where did that come from I guess college. What was your just college okay so what did you study at West Shore so I went to I went to college twice. Okay, I, went to U, I went to U of M Flint for four years when I first graduated high school. Um, I didn't end up graduating from there. As one of my professors always said, life happens. Sure. I ended up moving up here, and I went back to West Shore where I got my degree. Gotcha. At U of M, I studied philosophy. Uh, and politics is a topic within philosophy. Okay. One of my focuses was politics, and I also took a government classes. Um, I took a ton of business. I took a ton of economics. Um, management, leadership, stuff like that, and also philosophy. Um, and then I came to West Shore, um, and I worked for the philosophy professor. I was uh, Dr. Sanderson, uh, Dr. Sanderson's assistant, and he got me into all kinds of stuff on campus. That was a really great job that I had there for three years. Um, I, I did my work study there, so I okay. worked for the professor, and I did all kinds of stuff on campus. Any anything I could get into, I did it. Um, and working with him, I learned a lot about politics, government. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken, you know, if they have a government class, I probably took it. You know, so college is where I learned about it. And then, of course, after that, on my own, I, I've, yeah. I keep up to date. I still take lectures. Uh, Yale Open Courses is a great place Dude, to look. Have you been there? I'm on it. Yes. I'm not on it right now, but it was a couple of years ago. My, yeah. my wife was like, hey, you know, you could go to Yale. And I said, what? I did a bunch I of I almost want to get courses. a T-shirt, yeah. but I did take some courses, <laughs> Yeah, which nice. is pretty rad. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, I don't know if you're doing this anywhere else, but YouTube. So I mean, but it's essentially a podcast. You should be putting it everywhere. You, I was you've got doing a few that before I started it like running. You stopped a little bit, but I started is... running for office, so I stopped doing it. Okay, I might. Uh, I will start it back up. I think you should. I will. I do. I th I really do think you should. There's, Thank you. Yeah, I'll take that into they were, consideration. They were interesting. I, I the um the re the um reacted to uh, Robert Reich. Reich. Yes, I thought that I liked them all, but that one was really cool. I like how you were in frame and showing clips. And yeah. then talking about the clip and then going back to the clip and then kind of reaffirming. I thought, this is pretty cool. Thank you for yeah. watching that. Yeah, dude. Uh, it popped up on your Facebook because I stalked you on Facebook. That's right. But, uh, so, so, yeah. So, yeah. I'm just going to hit the subscribe button. So, now you got another subscriber. Great. But, yeah, I thought that was really neat, dude. And I don't, I don't know where you're pulling your... Well, obviously, like you just said, you're very educated in the topic of politics, but... I think you could, you could do much more and a little bit and longer too. Yeah, yeah. Because these are my just these are little ideas. You know, I they're, would great. Like to expand they're great. They're great. Uh, I think I think you could expand on them and do more long form, informational. I think there's a there's a community out there that would watch that for yeah. sure. Yeah, Thanks. I'll put this in the show notes. The link to the issues with Nate Markham. I great. think it's I think it's pretty cool. I think a lot of people would dig it. So hopefully maybe you get a few extra subscribers out of it. Who knows? But <laughs> I'm down for it. I liked it a lot. I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I like your setup in the back. Looks like you like records. I actually have a small business where I sell vintage records uh, out of Marianne's Antiques here downtown Manistee. Uh, my mom has a few in, uh, booths in there. Okay. And she's been in there for years, probably over 15 years, I'd say. And a few months ago, I was like, hey, can I put a crate of records in your booth? They sold like hotcakes. Probably sold my buddy less. I, I couldn't, <laughs> I can't buy them fast enough. So that's been really fun. That's cool. Yeah. So is that what you do for fun? Listen to records and records. I'm a DJ. Um, I was a DJ when I lived in Flint in my early twenties. That's, you know, I would DJ every weekend. I don't so much anymore. I still have all my stuff. Listen to records, more of a casual thing now, but yeah, I'm a record enthusiast. I don't know. It seems to me, I was talking to a friend of mine, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he was talking about records. He's really in the music, really in the records and collecting. And I'm, and I'm always amazed at the shit that he finds when you think that it's all gone now. Yeah. You know, like people are selling it online. Most people, there's uh, so many pickers out there now that yep. it's like they're really fine. They're really looking for the absolute golden nugget at the bottom of a hay bale or it's something. It's getting scarce. It's hard to find records in good condition. A lot of them are in a little bit poor condition because the good ones have been bought up from decades and decades of people digging. Um, 
really the coolest part about it's the hunt for me like the hunt you find one it's you know like i i don't even listen to them anymore i sell them it's just the the best part's finding it <laughs> i listen to a few of them <laughs> he found my buddy found a I think it was a black sabbath album i sell a ton of black sabbath well yeah he's got like I couldn't even put a number on it. It's probably the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Tens of thousands of records. And he found this record. He was at the coffee shop, and he was showing us. And you know, I'm not in the music or anything like that. I'm like, oh, that looks pretty cool. It's, it's in great condition. He's like, yeah, I just wish it still had the poster. And then at that moment, he looked behind the record. And he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Pulled it out and had the poster in it. Like, he was all cheesed up about it. And yeah. Like, ah, well great i guess that's a big deal <laughs> yeah but, it is for a guy who collects records that's thrilling yeah so what are you and sabrina do for fun around here we we spend a lot of time we go down to the beach a lot we go out to eat a lot we always try the local eater eateries you know um when our well we still do the river walk when our kids were young we we had a double stroller and we do the river walk every other day down to the beach when we first moved here that was the most incredible thing in the world to us was that river walk down to the beach and just such a view um we still do that frequently but the local stuff we we stay busy locally you know we also do we go to concerts um we uh the next one we have coming up is uh common he's a rapper yeah and uh, he has a on valentine's day he's performing with a philharmonic in grand rapids wow yeah we're going to see that so that's going to be incredible yeah i'm sure it's not, i like common yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that'll be a pretty rad concert for sure mm-hmm. you brought up the river walk and i started thinking about downtown when you were talking and the one thing i wanted to ask i forgot to ask shane so do you have any thoughts on the gateway project how to help move that project along you know that's something that i think about and we i think uh reaching out to people we have to we're gonna have to go find somebody i don't think anyone's just gonna show up and say that they want that um and i think that it's probably gonna be really expensive to build something there don't you think i would i would assume millions uh it'll be millions of of millions of dollars yeah but i'm not that connected to you know the synchronicity of the whole thing like who owns what, who's got plans to do what, uh, if the plans are there, what's the movement on them. And if there's no movement on them, my thought is we need to do something, whether it's green space for now and get rid of the fences and the ridiculous banners and do something with it, put a food court. I don't know. Food trucks in there, wouldn't that would be something? I mean, at least for a little while, you know, in the summer when we're super busy downtown, if it, you know, if it's a if it's if it's set up in a way that doesn't negatively impact the restaurants that we do have downtown, I'm all in. Yeah, you know, I will. I I mean, I will say, you know, as a business owner, first of all, a little bit of competition is good. It helps your business. It helps you improve in things. But we definitely, I definitely don't want to take away from operations that you know our brick and mortar but you know food trucks tend to work in other cities it, that's definitely an option but doing something with the land that yeah encourages commerce downtown uh brings people downtown whether that's a green space or additional parking or just something to utilize the space until development begins yeah you know whether that's like hey we have a i don't want to speak out of church on who owns the property i'm not even 100 percent sure who exactly owns it now but even if there's just a lease agreement in lieu of development like mm-hmm. hey we're gonna use the space for you know it's gonna cost x amount of dollars per month or per year until development begins or that there's a development a real development agreement to break ground yeah it's kind of where my mind's at on it would you agree Absolutely. I, I think it's a huge concern. That's right. That's where, that's what everybody sees when they drive through Manistee, uh, is, are those corners right there. And it used to be House of Flavors, and uh, there was a little antique store there um, that all got torn down, and they were going to put a hotel in. Um, from what I yep. know, the hotel down on the beach came in, and there, there uh, was no longer interest in that hotel there. Um, 
I think it's a huge problem. And really what I can say is that I'll take that concern before the board. And I think that you're right, that we need to put something there. And I, w I would like a, a green space there, even if a green space could be permanent. It, that wouldn't cost tens of millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, it wouldn't suck. Ever. You know, yeah. we could do so much. We could do, like, splash pads in the summer, or we could do ice skating rink downtown. You know, they're talking about doing something similar to that on the uh, west end of River Street. But, the, I mean, there. I guess my point is there's a lot of opportunity and you know, that could be one of those things where you have a community forum about it. We have the uh, we have an opportunity to lease this space until development comes in, if that's like the scenario. What are the things that you would like to see here? Anything other than what we currently have? Yeah, <laughs> you it's, know, it's terrible. Yeah, it really is. It doesn't do Manistee justice that we need a like a beautiful gateway there. And then with the signage that says the gateway to Manistee, the gateway project. So then then the business owners downtown are forced to answer questions constantly about it and they don't have all the information and they just don't yeah you know i sold my business in january and i didn't have all the information for all the years that that project was going to begin and then it stopped so it's frustrating from a you know a business person's point of view downtown like we don't know what's going on Right, we just keep trying to be positive about it, like oh, something's coming, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I think that's the rhetoric. I think that's the information that's being provided, is that it's coming. There, we're just trying to figure it out still yeah. for all these years. It's, I, you know, I don't know. It's different than if some, some, if like I go and buy a piece of land because I'm going to build a house on it, and then I decide not to build on it, and it's just a vacant piece of land now. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody really cares about that, depending on where it is. It's just open land yeah but here there's advertisement everywhere for it and nothing's happening yeah that that concerns a lot of people that concerns everybody in the community that's not hidden out in the woods somewhere right this is everybody's neighborhood right down here this is our downtown area so i agree it's extremely important one thing before i let you go i want to talk about um like outdoor recreation you know, what are your thoughts on the rail distribution, moving the rail system for, I'm big on, just full, full disclosure, if you know anything about me, one of the things I'm big on is outdoor recreation, okay. uh, outdoor sports, uh, running, biking, you know, cycling. If we're going to change anything with the roads, I'd love to have more of a shoulder for cyclists, uh, more trail connections for gravel bike rides, trail rides, stuff like that, which the rail project would provide some of that for us and connect us to other trail systems to help bring again the reoccurring theme with me is always how can we bring more dollars into the community more access for people to travel in yeah uh, spend their money and then retreat back to where they're from is always a hot button for me yeah so i was just talking to meg botzer current county commissioner about this and she told me that one of the top seven ways you can develop the economy of a town is by connecting all of the trails connect the trailheads yep. and she's pushing for an interconnected trail system and uh, i talked to karen goodman current county commissioner and she is really interested in uh, bike lanes and adding bike lanes on the side of the road um and special pathways for bikes so that is definitely on the agenda of the, of the board Good. are you on board with that Yes. Good. 100%. 100%. Good. Yeah, whatever we can do. Selfishly, I, I mean, I'm probably not going to see, you know, the movement of the, the the rail system and have this beautiful bike trail, running trail, hiking trail open in my lifetime. But hopefully for my grandkids, they can enjoy it. And I think I think we need people that can see a longer vision, who can see 25 to 40, even 50 years down the road. If we start the process now, we can create something that other gen younger generations and generations after them can enjoy. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are, are a little too short-sighted when it comes to uh, community development and growth. They're only thinking about the right now when I think uh, from a human perspective, we have to think about the future. Yeah. So those are just some of the things that I'm, I'm really into. Um, as far as my big picture is, I'm going to have, my kids are going to have kids, and I want those kids to enjoy some of the uh, fruits of all this labor. Absolutely. And I hope it comes to fruition. Yeah, I think it will. 
Yeah, dude, I think that you've got a really bright light. Thank you. And I think that if elected, you do a really good job. Appreciate I really, that. I really believe that. Um, you know, anybody that goes into this kind of community service, I, if, if you go into it with good intentions, uh, good things will happen. You know, and, and you don't seem like, you don't seem like the kind of person that's going in this is with some kind of agenda or weird angle not it, really yeah, it's think, to serve the community yeah and i and i feel that and and i'm being honest i want you to know that i think you know sometimes conversations like this can be a little difficult and i think you did a great job and i think that uh yeah if elected you've got some opportunity there man i think you can i think you can do some cool stuff thank you you're welcome thanks for coming on yeah thank you for having me yes sir